My name is Gregory Triplett. I am a professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Virginia Commonwealth University. I became interested in engineering in junior high school. We took advanced math. I got to work in the labs. It seems as if there was more to offer than to do math problems. I really like to, to use my hands and it seems as if engineering was one of those pathways that would allow me to tap into that natural curiosity. It was clear to me during my undergraduate years that there weren't too many faculty that looked like me. In fact, during my entire undergraduate experience, I had one black professor. I thought that it would be important for me to consider going into academe so that people could look at me and understand that there was an opportunity for them to be a professor, to work directly with students, and to perform research that's on the edge of the frontier. So I'm very interested in using light to tell a story. So in my background, I use a lot of lasers. Uh, and laser light, really interestingly, allows you to interact with really small substances. And by doing so, you don't change its shape, you don't change its constituents, but it does allow you to understand what's underneath. So in my research, I use light to tell a story. I will study molecules, protein molecules, and I can actually understand what's happening during an actual reaction. So in other words, I use light to help develop enabling technology for improved or personal health. I look at a process known as protein phosphorylation. Uh, it simply stated, this is a, a chemical reaction that happens within all of our bodies where it actually allows our bodies to use uh, protein as energy. So those processes are pretty well defined, but what happens inside of those reactions is pretty interesting. Sometimes the reaction doesn't go as planned and it can create an environment that is not conducive. Uh, for example, if you don't um, sort of pro process those proteins appropriately, they can fold over top of each other sort of like tape just rolling over it to create a really large tape ball but when that happens your body doesn't know how to utilize those proteins and so they can create uh, illnesses they can lead to various diseases we study those processes in our lab to have a better understanding how those proteins um, impact human health i would say try anything it's important that you be unafraid and be willing to take risks. Uh, my son, who's in fourth grade, uh, he works uh, in robotics, he plays with Legos, he puts puzzles together, and he likes his PlayStation. Uh, but some of the things that he does in our house creates a little bit of a plumbing problem. So I've had to take apart my sink to, to extract certain things that he's done as a chemistry experiment, but I never yell because he's exploring. And so for me, I think about what I would encourage, to, uh, encourage students to do as a parent is to be unafraid, explore, take risk. And every lesson is a good lesson, even if it is a quasi disaster. Let me show you my lab space. This is where all the magic happens. In order for you to do research, there are special tools that you must have available. What you see here are uh, different utilities that we can use together to create a certain function. We actually use light to explore properties and it requires that we examine the molecule very closely. So here is a very sophisticated microscope. It allows us to see uh, features down to the micron. That's about the size of a human hair. That light travels from the microscope to these specialized boxes where we can take the light and essentially chop it up. And by chopping up that light very specifically and in a controllable way, we can actually determine the molecular fingerprint. What does that mean? It basically means I can tell you without a doubt what is involved in that molecule. By doing so, I can study literally every reaction possible. So, if you're interested in research, just understand you get to play with a lot of cool tools. And every day, myself and my team learn something new.
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I have. No one was harmed. We evacuated the building. We've learned a lot since then. <laughs> I would say don't try that at home, kids, uh, because you do get your hand slapped, as did I. Yes, I can. We put our own robots. In fact, this system can be automated. So we use computer programming opportunities. Um, my, kid, my students tend to learn how to program. So we can automate this process. We can actually perform experiments without actually being here, which is really good. Sometimes these experiments take a really long time and uh, students don't want to be here all day. That's okay, right? We still get the work done. So kids, you got to learn how to program. Use it as a skill. It's a good tool to have in your toolbox. My current lab is staffed with both post, uh, PhD students and undergraduate students. At the peak of my lab, when I was, you know, sort of working on multiple grants at a time, I had 12 students, which is a lot. Today I have three, which is not bad. It's a lot smaller. Uh, it's a much more close-knit group. Uh, but I always have room in my lab. You can actually apply on my website. I would not look at school as uh, how long you were there. Uh, I got a high school degree, that's 12 years. I went to college for my bachelor's, which is four years. I went back to school for my master's, which was another two years. And then I went for my PhD, which was five. By the time I graduated, I was 31 years old. The good news is, is during that entire time period, I got a lot of free lunches. There is a student who works, who worked in my lab where he had a, he had a bolt that he needed to turn. And instead of him turning the bolt clockwise to tighten it, he turned it counterclockwise to untighten it. All the bells and whistles went off. Uh, it was a total disaster. The, the price, uh, that it, uh, that the, the, uh, the price to repair it was beyond $30,000. I didn't yell, I did not overreact. And as of today, that student who worked in my lab now builds rockets for SpaceX. Lasers are very dangerous. You should never look at them directly in your eye. Never ever point a laser in someone's eye. So we have goggles that we use around the lab when in fact we're performing an experiment. It's all about protection. Usually, I would have on a white coat, you know, I would have gloves. For the purpose of this interview, I thought it was better to show you our equipment, but we take every precaution necessary. I love the ability to create. I love the opportunity I have to pursue things that most people can't see. And it's the trust and it's the faith that I have in myself and in the science that allows me to pursue those opportunities. So I think engineers have a certain freedom. They can do anything uh, that's, that's, uh, that they desire.